Does anybody know the name of that song that was playing from the heavenlies? Hmm? Oh, Perfect Love. And I don't know if it's in our hymn book or not. And um, it's uh, one that so many times is played at weddings, but it is one that really just relates to who the Lord is and his perfect love to us. I haven't heard that one in a long, long time until, um, until Guy and, and, and Chuck recorded it. Which one of you played the violin? <laughs> JT with one arm. But uh, yeah, oh perfect love. I don't think it's in here, is it? And uh, it's a, it's, it is a, it's a good song. Well, good to see you tonight, and thank you for coming out for the evening service. And uh, I was just saying to the group in the back a couple of weeks ago when... Uh, we were talking here before the evening service. I said, one Sunday night in the summer or sometime, I'd like for us to take a group of people up to First Baptist Church in Reynoldsville, where my granddad pastored, beautiful church, nice big pipe organ and everything. And uh, we happened to go there two weeks ago for Sunday morning vacation. And, well, on the... On they, on vacation, we happened to go there two weeks ago when we were on vacation on Sunday morning. And, and uh, you know, every now and then we just drop in, and this time we dropped in and the pastor said, you know, next time you're coming, let me know and you can preach, which would be an honor because that was the second place I had a public sermon. But I said to him, I said, what if we bring a group up from Faith Baptist someday and We'll just have an evening service here. He said, that would be wonderful. And so, next Sunday night, <laughs> no, I don't know, but um, I'd love for you folks to see. I've never, in all my 65 years, have seen a church like that. Uh, the design of it, and, and uh, it's, it's just beautiful. I won't go into it right now, but uh, I'd love for you all to see it. But anyway, good to see you tonight, and uh, just a couple of things to, to highlight in the announcements. And uh, don't forget that Sunday or Saturday is the Sunday School Picnic, and, and uh, this is some, a good time of fellowship for all of us. But more specifically, come out there, yes, but on Sunday morning also, we're going to be gathering here in the sanctuary as we have a, sort of a rally day to encourage people to attend Sunday school, and that people would be you. Uh, if you don't currently attend Sunday school, we'd invite you to begin to attend Sunday school. There's a class for all ages. And next Sunday morning, we're going to be having the um, uh, Sunday school teachers speak concerning what uh, they're teaching in class. And so I would just invite you to come on out 9.30 next Sunday morning for this gathering together. And then don't forget that on 9.11 next Monday night at 6 o'clock at the big Kmart parking lot here in Altoona, Jared Bowling is going to be putting on a day to remember, 9.11. It's going to be a patriotic rally. And uh, everybody's invited to come out for that. And, and we would encourage you, please, uh, participate in that as you have the opportunity to do so. Uh, other announcements, I'm sure that you've had the opportunity of seeing them on the overhead, and so we encourage you, please, to uh, participate where you have the opportunity to do so. Tonight, our responsive reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23 in this great passage of Scripture where the Apostle Paul is laying out for us the tremendous spiritual blessings God has given us in Christ Jesus. And uh, uh, it talks about his desire and his prayer for the Ephesians. And we, we will read it responsibly. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And I invite you to stand out of respect for God and his word as uh, we read it responsibly. The Word of God says, 
Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. May God bless his word as we've read it and we know that he will. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you once again for the many spiritual blessings that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, our Heavenly Father, that we've been able to read down through this passage tonight that reminds us of what we are as members of the body of Christ through faith in Jesus Christ the Lord. We thank you that we are able to come out on a Sunday evening and have the freedom to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And indeed, that's why we're here. We're here for no other reason but to exalt you. And I pray, our Father, that every element of every thought, of every word that we render from this point on to the end of the service tonight will truly honor you, exalt you, lift you up, and glorify you. And we'll be careful to praise you if your spirit will lead us to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Reverence, minister to us, please. How many reasons do you have to be thankful for today? How many reasons? Five, ten? Well, our first song tonight sings about having 10,000 reasons. Because of those reasons, we have the opportunity to bless the Lord. The chorus says to sing like never before. So please join us as we sing 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name.
Our next song starts out like this. Please listen to the words as I read them. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Please continue singing with us in Christ alone. <laughs> opportunity and the privilege to be able to worship him in our giving in just a moment. Let's focus our eyes on the Lord. We want to see him. We want to see Jesus.
and ask reverence to stay there. Can we put that back up on the screen again? We're going to sing it again. And when it says, open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, let's sing it this way. Open our eyes, Lord, we need to see Jesus. And then when we go into that next verse where it says, open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen, let's put in there, open our ears, Lord, and make us to listen. Okay? So let's sing it that way and uh, with, with, those, with those words. back and sing it again it says open our eyes Lord we need to see Jesus to reach out and touch him and tell him tell him we love him tell him we love him okay when's the last time you told Jesus you love him tell him you love him so let's sing it that way with the changing of the words and I think I was the only one in the sanctuary who sang the wrong words that last time so let's try it again <laughs> prayer of every one of us every time we come into this sanctuary to worship to see to hear the Lord Jesus Christ thank you you may be seated thank you reverence for that extra time don't send me a bill and uh, had a visitor's card on my pulpit this morning when I showed up the guy misses two weeks and they don't recognize him anymore huh I'm going to fill it out and send it in. I hope to get a visit from somebody. Um, just a bit of a report. Uh, has uh, Micah become president of Summit University yet? Not yet. He's working on it, huh? How's he doing? Pretty good? Sounds like he's doing good. You know how good you are. Well, I remember those days quite well. And, uh, but that's all right, and uh, praise the Lord, we pray for him. He's happy you're there. Well, you can always go visit him once a day, that's okay. <laughs> he, would, he would say, Mom, stay home, wouldn't he? And Zach, you folks beat Lock Haven yesterday. Wow, pretty good, congratulations. <laughs> Looks like you beat him pretty good, huh? Well, congratulations on that. Keep that up. Well, we'll invite our men to come forward as we receive our evening offering tonight. And um, let's give as unto the Lord. Verse of scripture that I wanted to read comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, where it says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. 
Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we come to you this uh, evening now, we thank you for promises like this that are found from Genesis to the book of the Revelation. That when we give unto you with a cheerful, loving heart, that you in turn bless us beyond our ability to receive. We thank you for that. And now, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come before you to give tonight of our tithes and our offerings and our gifts. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us individually and to us as a church. And as we give now, we thank you for this great privilege and pray that you'll multiply each one of these gifts to use them for your glory in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ from this place around the world. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. We're going to invite our <clears throat> instrumentalist to uh, play for us a hymn. It's a familiar hymn. We all know it's hymn number 470. It's entitled, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. I invite you to take your hymn book and turn to hymn number 470 as we stand and sing together this hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus.
our missions moment. You may be seated. Oh, good evening to, to everyone, and this is time for our missions moments. And uh, the missionary of the week are Kent and Rebecca Sager from New York City. And, you know, as we think back, there's been several of us that had, uh, well, we've made several trips to New York and the time of the hurricane and the devastations that took place to, to share God's love with people, to, to meet needs of people. And so these, these missionaries serving in New York have given us a firsthand report for those that went, but, you know, to try to even think of the mission field that they have, the vast majority of people from, from all walks of life, from all nationalities seem to converge on New York City. And with the Sagers, they have the responsibility, they have the call, they have been asked to, by the Lord, to spread his word, tell others about his great love, cross culture lines in New York City. So we, uh, we need to pray for the, the Sagers. They're there in New York. They have two prayer requests. It was on their prayer sheet this week. And one was for a lady who's been disillusioned by the Jehovah Witnesses and the cults, and when you, when you think of New York City, they probably have about every cult or every ism or schism that could be had, it could be found in New York City. And uh, we need to pray for the people. Other request is for their son, Ken Jr., who's now in, uh, returned to Liberty University to further his education. And you know, as we pray for Ken Jr., pray that, the Lord would lead him. It seems a lot of times and when children are bringing up in missionary homes, those who the love of the mission field follow in those footsteps to, to return to the field. And, you know, just pray that Kent would follow where God would lead him. But pray for, pray for the people of New York City. Pray that the gospel could have free course through Kenton's uh, ministry there. So if you would take a moment as we bow before our Lord and Father, we, we do think of the song we just sang, saying that there's no turning back and that Father is those and we have stepped out on to, to follow you wherever you would lead, that Father there is no turning back and we, we think of the Sagers today who are ministering in the New York City and Father even some of the outlying areas that Father, the, the people that they come in contact with, that you, would, that you would open their ears. That, Father, you would open their eyes that they may see. That they may see you through, through the Sagers as they minister. Father, that to your, through your words that are preached, through your words that are taught, and whether they be in Bible studies or on street corner ministries, that, Father, people would come to realize the need for a Savior. And, Father, as we hear even to this one lady, and they're asked to pray that, that she would be taken away or taken out of that cult of Je Jehovah Witnesses. Father, I, I pray that you would search and that you would break other hearts. Father, if you would convict them, show them the call of them. Father, have Kent and Rebecca plead with them to understand that they're in need of a Savior. And Father, that you sent your Son, that they may have an eternal life. Father, we pray for the Sagers as they minister there, as Ken goes to further his education. But Father, that your word would have a free course in or out of the streets. And we can ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ron. And that's a, re a, re a remember, a, re a reminder to us. That missions isn't just in Africa or Europe or Asia, but missions is anywhere we are. Um, this past week, uh, the company that I work for was, was asked to uh, supply some transportation for uh, those who were experiencing uh, devastation in their lives in Texas. And uh, last Sunday night at approximately 10 o'clock at night, when you know, 
we're trying to wind down and you know we want to get a good rest for the upcoming week you know we receive a call that um, we need we need help and um, you know so at that point we began working and um, we were able to send 20 drivers and 20 buses to San Antonio uh, beginning at 3 o'clock in the morning on Monday morning and um, if you've ever gotten a call like that you know a lot of times you're just not all together there you know you get called woken up in the middle of the night saying this is what we need are you available to help well sure you're avail I'm available to help well this is how long it's going to be and of course we don't know how long it's going to be but you know there's a lot of what ifs there's a lot of unanswered uh, questions and uh, you know so one of the opportunities that I have is to be able to, to speak with people that I work with on a regular basis. That's the position that I'm in. And um, today um, we, uh, we, we heard that it was, <clears throat> it was announced that it's a national day of praying, a national day of prayer for those who have experienced um, devastation in their lives uh, due to Hurricane Harvey there in Texas. So as I do quite often whenever I send a team out like that, I'll send them updates throughout the day, multiple times throughout the day. And um, this afternoon, I sent out a, uh, an update to them just to kind of welcome them again. And, and this is what I, I wrote in my text. I said, Team Harvey, and this is what I've been calling them all week. All right, Team Harvey, good afternoon. You may have heard the president announced that today is a day of prayer for those who have and are experiencing the effects of Hurricane Harvey. Yes, I am one who prays often. In fact, I've prayed daily for each of you by name since Monday, October the 28th. There's a person who I'm pretty close to who also prays quite a bit. That's my dad. He's a pastor and many of you know him as a fellow bus driver. If you don't know, dad drove bus years ago. His name is Gary. And I've asked him to say a prayer for each of you, as well as the Texans on this day of prayer. His prayer follows, and you can only imagine Dad's prayers aren't short and sweet and to the point. <laughs> All right, so I had to do the little dot, dot, dot thing, you know, to kind of continue my thought. You know, but in the meantime, you know, I asked Dad if he would, if he would, uh, if he would say a prayer for for our drivers, as well as for the, the folks who have experienced all this catastrophe in their life. Um, you know, while I was trying to download that prayer that he sent me and send it to these folks, you know, I've got, I got responses like this. Thank you, Mike. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, brother. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my mom was a prayer warrior. Thank you, Mike. Um, you know, the little emojis that people have on their phones, you know, you get the little praying hands and all that. I got, I got all that kind of stuff. Um, and again, we have 20 drivers down, down there in, in Houston, or San Antonio, or actually Beaumont today, um, you know, getting these messages, and it's on a group text, so they're, they're seeing this. Um, so I want to share with you uh, the prayer that Dad, you know, said, and I was able to send to our folks there in Texas as a, as a means of encouraging because it, it was a means of encouragement to them because not knowing exactly what they were going into, they answered the call, all right? And this gives us an opportunity as Christians to be able to encourage them and to be able to share our faith. And I, and I just share this with you to take opportunity to, to be able to spread the good news of the gospel with those that we work with, with those that you work with, those that you live with, no matter what the situation is. And this is Dad's prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings of this day that you have given us. As your word says, this is the day you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today has been designated as a national day of prayer for victims of Hurricane Harvey. So Father, we pray for each one who has lost loved ones in the storm as well as for those whose homes and properties have been destroyed. We pray that you will give them all the wisdom and courage they need to recover from this terrible tragedy. We pray for those in government, 
and certain agencies who must make decisions on various recovery matters and that each decision will be for the betterment of those involved. Give strength and rest to the police, the military, and the rescue workers as they sort through all the destruction and attempt to provide help for the afflicted. We pray also for all the bus drivers who have the responsibility to transport people back and forth around Texas. Give them the strength, rest, and vigilance needed to perform their duties. Father, give them the ability to find all their destinations without frustration or even without getting lost. Believe me, they need that. <laughs> and use them to be a blessing to those they will serve and also bless them for their service. Provide for their families back home as they are away. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then, you know, it just, it was just a flurry of thank yous. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Dahl. And thanks, Mike, for keeping us in your prayers. Bless you and thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Emojis and all these. Beautiful, Mike. Tell your dad, thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Gary Dahl. That comes from Skip Kreutz. Um, you know, and, and it just goes on and on and on. And, and, and I just... I just encourage you to, uh, to use, you know, you know, different situations to be able to share your faith and your salvation with people that we just come in contact with daily and just watch how God will work. I know there's a number of folks that are on that mission who do know the Lord. And some of you probably even know some of those people as I look around. Um, but there are others that I know that don't. So, you know, I would ask that you continue to pray for them um, we still don't know when they're going to be coming home. They're not, spending, they're not spending their nights or their days in an air-conditioned uh, hotel room. Um, they're spending the nights in the bus. Uh, all the hotels are taken up. Uh, we've provided them air mattresses and a blanket and a pillow. Uh, you know, so if that's what you want to call comforts of, you know, whatever, Texas, um, that's what they have. Um, about the only benefit that they're getting is Texas barbecue. They're very happy to be there because of the food. Um, but um, I just, uh, like I mentioned, I just encourage you to, uh, to use uh, opportunities to be able to share Christ. That's what missions is about, all right? Ron encourages us each and every night, each and every Sunday, gives us updates with, with ministry, uh, missionary stories and what, how God's working. But you know what? God can work in our lives, too. And I encourage you just to be uh, available and, and just watch how God will work. And Dad, I want to just thank you publicly for, for taking the time. I know I probably took uh, probably two minutes in your case to, to say that prayer, but um, it meant a lot to, to, to have you do that and do it in such short notice. So I do appreciate that. The next hymn we're going to sing is The Solid Rock. And... Part of being a Christian is knowing that we have that solid foundation. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Let's stand and sing together. Hymn number 394, we'll sing the first and last verses of The Solid Rock.
seated, and Meredith's going to share with us a special number. That'll be a great day, will it not? When we're glorified, when we're up with God in heaven, complete in Christ. Of course, we know we cannot be complete if we have not come to know Christ as our Savior. If we haven't realized that our sin separates us from, from God, and we have no hope, but yet that God sent His Son to die on the cross out of love for us, out of mercy and grace. And all we had to do, have to do is believe trust have faith uh, it's a great great song complete in complete what was that complete in thee that's what i was going to say then i also and i thought it's not complete in thee um but uh, that was the first time i sang it she said what she was going to sing back in the library and i said well she said you probably never heard it before and you're right i never heard it before but now i have and uh i said sing it now and she said you're gonna have to wait until later but uh, thank you, Meredith, and uh, it's just a great reminder of where we are, maybe where we were, where we are, and where we will be, is it not? A couple weeks ago, on Sunday morning, uh, we studied Titus 2, and uh, it was great to get a little bit of a refresher this morning on Titus 2. But Titus 2 took us into 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. And so last Sunday morning, we studied 1 Corinthians chapter 1, which is actually going to take us into Proverbs 3. And, uh, and Dad, this morning, when he asked uh, uh, what, what, maybe what I was going to speak on, and I said, actually kind of goes with what I spoke on last Sunday morning, he said, well, then maybe you ought to speak this Sunday morning. I said, no, that's all right. 
Go ahead. You know, I'll take tonight. Um, and so we're going to continue that thought. And of course, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, when we were looking at 1 Corinthians 1, what we were looking at was really God's wisdom, right? Does anybody, you know, in that youth group a lot of times, you know, I ask, what have we been studying? Or what, you know, what did we study a couple weeks ago, which led us into this? And I'm not going to do that here because although Taylor is here, um, you can't see him, but that's all right. He can't see you either. But he is here, and he's always the one that answered what we've been studying. What we studied a month ago to three weeks ago to two weeks ago to one week ago, and Taylor has that great mind, and, and uh, I, I wish I had the mind of Taylor. Taylor, do you hear me up there? I do hear you. I, I up here. Oh, <laughs> am I that soft in speaking? <laughs> but Taylor, for some reason, he just has that great mind, and he can remember exactly what you taught six weeks ago and probably could speak that same sermon. And so, you know, in youth group, and, and we're going to miss Taylor now uh, because he's, of course, moved on. He's started college as well at Penn Highlands and uh, walked into Sunday school today, and, and there was 14 sitting there, and I just looked. I said, it's quiet in here today. <laughs> Andrew, Taylor's brother, says, it's because Taylor's not here. And uh, I said, oh, that's right, Taylor's not with us anymore. He's moved on to Mr. Alex's class, so Mr. Alex now has the, the loud class, I guess you could say. But, <laughs> but no, I did ask questions today, and it was interesting because as we were studying with the youth group today, I said, okay, what I've done today is really I got this study together, but I want you guys to communicate with me. And uh, so then after that discussion, I was thinking, well, maybe... Uh, we're going to struggle with that since Taylor's not here because Taylor is a good communicator. And they did well, Taylor. They did well without you there. But as we were studying, and I was studying for that, and I was studying this at the same time. Actually, I think what I, when I was studying for this, it brought me out of maybe I should study about this with the teens too. Not this exact passage, but a little bit about this. And, and the reason I've done that is for some reason, these past three weeks as I've been studying, it keeps bringing back verses in Proverbs and verses in Proverbs. Well, what we studied today, four of the 11 or 12 verses that we studied in youth group came out of Proverbs. And, and, I, and I like this because, it, you know, we're talking about God's wisdom. And, and where's the best place we can look to find some of God's wisdom? You could say Proverbs really go into the Bible. But as we look, as we think of wisdom, we go to Proverbs, do we not? And uh, Carrie asked me today what, what, you're talk, what, what we're studying, and I said, well, we're going to be studying wisdom. And so she says, oh, are you going to be studying out of James? <laughs> it's a very good place to find wisdom too, right? Because James tells us that if we lack wisdom, we should what? Ask God. Ask God. And where's that James 1, 5, I want to say? Right? If we lack wisdom, we should ask of God who giveth liberally. to all men liberally, right? All we need to do is ask. And so last week we were looking at 1 Corinthians 1 and we were looking at God's wisdom, God's foolishness, and man's wisdom really came down to God's foolishness compared to man's wisdom, which is what? God's foolishness, whatever that may be, far outweighs whatever man's wisdom is, is it not? And so, but as we were doing that, I came back here to Proverbs 3, and Proverbs 3, I, I liked Proverbs 3 because in youth group today we were talking, and, and, and this is just for all you parents what we were talking about, uh, we were talking about honoring your parents and obeying your parents and respecting your parents, so we should have a good week, <laughs> right? But really seeing, and, and, and there's many verses in Proverbs, we only looked at four that really talked about that. But what I like about Proverbs 3 here is it's Solomon, of course, is the human author of this book. We all know that God inspired Solomon to write this. But in chapter 3 it here, here is Solomon spreading some wisdom down to his son. You can see that in verse 1. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. And, and as we're looking, you can see that actually Proverbs chapter 2 talks about that as well. And, and so it's just great to see how... It comes down and Solomon is passing on that wisdom. Solomon being the wisest man who ever lived. And I know as 
we talk today, a lot of time when we talk about wise men or wise guys, it's not in the wise way, right? When we talk about wise guys, we're talking about actually a foolish way. When you take 1 Corinthians 1, the foolishness of God, the foolishness of man, the wisdom of man, you put that in. When we talk about wise guys, we're talking about foolishness. Isn't that interesting how that works with, with 1 Corinthians 1? Anyway, but we're going to look at the first 10 verses of Proverbs chapter 3 this evening. And so uh, we're going to read them, and then we'll study them out, just a little bit of a Bible study uh, kind of way, uh, not necessarily preaching, but I uh, ask you to stand out of the respect of the reading of God's Word as we look at Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10, and, and actually it kind of goes good with what my dad did teach about this morning also, and uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe it was even last week, I thought, isn't, and I even said, it isn't interesting how God works, and I think uh, even talking to other people, it worked from Sunday school to uh, the different songs we sang to uh, the special music to, to the sermon and, and how that just flowed. But uh, it's, it's, it's always amazing to see how God works, is it not? And plans out the day using different parts, and those parts don't know what the other people are doing. It's just God's wisdom, is it not? Proverbs 3, 1 to 10 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to, thee, add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. Lord, we also thank you that if we lack in wisdom, all we need to do is ask, and you will give it. Lord, I pray that we're wise enough to ask for that wisdom. I think a lot of times we're not, that we are foolish enough to depend on ourselves. So, Lord, help us to seek you in everything we do. Ask, help us to ask for your wisdom, and then as we receive it, help us to really receive it and not be foolish like I think sometimes we are and just go about what we want to do anyway. Help us to seek you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So as we're looking at this, we see it's, it's great because it's a father passing down wisdom uh, to his son. And, you know, it, just interesting how Mike, even as he was talking about the guys in Fullington and, and asking Dad to pray, and yet that, that's a little bit of even asking there for a little bit of wisdom. A little bit of passing on down from a father to a son who then spreads it to other people, 20-some people. And, and that's 20-some people that we know about. Maybe they're spreading it on to other people. And, and, you know, and just seeing how God will work through that. But just thinking how Solomon here is passing that on down to his son. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. And then I like how we see that verse there. And then we see what happens if we... If, if the son, of course, would do that, you get the results of that. Because if he keeps the commandments, and of course the commandments that Solomon was passing down was really what God was wanting him to pass down. What God was telling Solomon to pass down. And it says in verse 2, we see the promises that happened if those commandments were kept. Length of days, long life, and peace shall, shall they add to thee. And we look at these length of days, and, and really when you look at it, it's like the days will be lengthened out. Your days will be out lengthened out or multiplied. And I think we know of a couple other verses that talk about that, do we not? And this is part where I was actually talking to the teens about Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Anybody know what Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says? Children, obey your parents. Mom reminded us of all the time. And we're still around, Mike. 
which means we did something right, right? We got a story about that earlier on this evening too, but uh, we're not going to go into that story. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And this is what we talked about in youth group. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What is that promise? That it may be, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Obey your parents. Why? That it may be well with thee, and you might live long on the earth. It's part of what Solomon was passing down. Does he say right in this passage to obey your parents? No. Does he say in this passage to honor your parents? No, it doesn't say that. But we can see that in other passages where Solomon's passing that down. And we did that in the youth group today. We looked at where Solomon was saying, honor your father and your mother. But the key to that is, if you honor your parents, you will live. There's a result. It's, it's the first commandment with promise. Long life, which is why Mike and I are still around. Still, <laughs> Dad, la- Dad was the first one to laugh about that. I don't know what that means. But anyway, but days of the, our days will be lengthened out or multiplied. And this, of course, is going back into keeping of the commandments, of God's commandments, keeping of the law. Your days will be lengthened out. Your days will be multiplied. You will be blessed because of that. And you go and you continue in your length of days and, and long life and peace. It, did you ever just wonder why maybe we don't have peace in our lives? And did you ever just think maybe it's not what's going around me as much as it's me? And think maybe if I'm not doing what's right, maybe somewhere in my life I have done something wrong, maybe I sinned and I didn't even realize it, and maybe that's causing me to not have the peace, or maybe there's something going on, maybe I'm just not trusting in God enough to have that peace. Don't forget what God wants. Don't forget how God wants us to live. If we live the way He wants us to live, we can have long life, length of days, long life, and peace. The peace which only God can give. Of course, that initially starts with salvation. We cannot have that if we're not saved. We can't have that peace if we're not saved. And, of course, that shall be added to thee. Verse 3 then goes on and says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the the table of thine heart. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. We should be living by mercy and truth, right? How could mercy and truth forsake us? How could mercy and truth forsake us? Well, if we have hate in our life, if we have selfishness in our life, we're really taking mercy out. Does that make sense? We're taking mercy out and we're putting hate and selfishness in there. Can we be forsaken then? Yes. How can truth forsake us? Well, if we're, sh- if we're shutting out all deliberate falsehood, all hypocrisy, conscious or unconscious, then we're allowing truth to work in ourselves. But I think a lot of times we maybe unconsciously, maybe consciously allow falsehood to be involved in our life. We allow hypocrisy to be involved in our life. Maybe we, as we've been talking, we talk a certain way, but we walk a different way. We talk how much we're Christians here in the church, but then we live it differently. And so maybe that, without even knowing, has creeped into our lives. Maybe that's because we're not bold enough to make that stand for God. And so we're allowing mercy and truth to forsake us. We're not binding them about our neck. We're not writing them on the table of our hearts. Why? Because we're not looking at mercy and truth as much as we're looking maybe at ourselves being selfish looking what's best for ourselves and then we get into the verses 5 and 6 and this is really what we're going to look into in our passage not just verses 5 and 6 but 5 and down and the key word to what I want to look at in verses 5 and 6 is, is the first word trust in the Lord trust in the Lord How much do we really trust in the Lord? How much do we trust in the Lord? I think we trust in the Lord to a certain point. 
We trust in the Lord to the point where it's what I want. I will trust in God. But then if it's something that I don't want, I'm not going to trust in God for that. If it's something that I disagree with, I'm going to not trust God for that because I know what's best. So I'm not going to trust God. If we take that back to 1 Corinthians, whose wisdom are we looking at? We're looking at man's wisdom. Because we're not trusting God. We're not ready to step out and trust God. We want to step in and trust ourselves. And that's where I think a lot of times we get caught up in what we see happening in these other verses prior to this where we're shutting out mercy. We're not, there is no mercy. There is no truth because we're not trusting in God. We're trusting only in ourselves. But it says here, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Not just a part of your heart, not just a little portion. Give it all. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. Why should we not lean on our own understanding? Because our understanding is foolishness. Our understanding is nothing. Which is why we need to go to James and ask God, God, give me wisdom. Help me as I do whatever it is that I'm going to do, that I have... Lord, help me to have your wisdom and help me to go with your wisdom. And I know there's times in my life where I'll say, God, help me out. Show me what I should do. And then God shows me what I should do. Oh, that's a good idea. But it might be better if I do this. Or you know what? Maybe I can start doing that and then work it into this. Is that the wisdom maybe that God gave me? No. I took maybe what God showed me to do, and then I decided, hey, I'm going to add on a little bit of Chaz wisdom on the God wisdom, which takes it totally the opposite direction. But trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. The importance here is when we're trusting in God with all of our heart, we're giving Him everything we are. When we lean on our own understanding, we're trying to use just our own brain. You understand that? You take God, trusting God with everything we are and giving Him everything, and then leaning on ourselves, that doesn't get us anywhere. Doesn't get us anywhere. Trust in God, and then also lean on God. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. That's how we're doing it. We're acknowledging God in all thy ways. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct our paths. Are our eyes open? We sang that song. Open our eyes, Lord. Are our eyes open? Or are they squinting and we're asking God to show us something, but we really don't want to receive it? Are our eyes open to what He has for us when we ask for that wisdom? Are we even asking for the wisdom is is the, the best question. Are we asking for wisdom or are we just forgetting God's wisdom and relying on our own wisdom? Trust in the Lord. And I think... Of course, these verses here, these, these we all knew, right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. We can all say it, but it doesn't matter if we can say it, if we can't do it. If we're not willing to do what's in that verse and give everything and acknowledge everything and all the ways acknowledge Him and He will direct our paths, if we're not willing to do it, it's no use saying, oh, I have that memorized. Because that's just a bunch of words then, if you're not actually living by it. It's just like the same thing as we talk on Sundays, a good talk, and then we live every other time we're not in the church building differently. We're not getting anywhere. We're not doing anything. We're relying on our own wisdom. We're relying on ourselves. Trust God. Trust in the Lord. Are we trusting in the Lord in every aspect of our life? Because if we're given our heart, that's every aspect of our life. If we're given our heart, are we trusting in God? Then you go on, verse 7, just continues the same thought process, really, but it adds to it. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes. A lot of times we think, and you know what, be honest with you, I, I, I know a lot of smart people. And I'm really talking about smart here now. I mean, really intelligent people. Okay, And I know a lot of not intelligent people. In fact, I probably fall into that category. 
but I like that category more than the smart people. I, I, if you're a smart person, uh, I still like you. <laughs> but I, you see these really, 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 really smart people, right? And they have no common sense. You know, I'd rather be dumb and have common sense. And that's not coming from the Bible. <laughs> but, but whether you're really, really smart or you're dumb and you trust your common sense because that's what you see and you're not trusting in God, both areas are wrong. Do you understand that? It doesn't matter if you're relying on your intelligence or if you're relying on your common sense. If you're not trusting in God and you're, you're doing what verse 7 says, we're not wise in our own eyes because we're going by what we know, whether it's intelligence or just there somehow, if we're not trusting in God, it's all worthless. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Do we fear the Lord? Really, do we fear the Lord? Because the key to Part of this here in, in, in seeing fear the Lord is, is the phrase that comes after that, which is what? Depart from evil. Are we fearing God and departing from evil? Or do we say we fear God and we just do what we want to do because we're wise in our own eyes? Well, how can we be wiser in God's eyes? Well, part of that is studying the Word of God. And that's what we were looking at last week. We can be wiser, get more wisdom from God just by studying His Word. Not just reading it like we would a newspaper, but digging deep, studying it out. Studying to show that we're approved unto God. You remember that one? We all know that one too because that's a wanna. And so we all went through a wanna. Not all of us went through a wanna. I understand that, but that's the theme verse for a wanna. Fear the Lord, trust the Lord. Fear the Lord. Fear Him not as I'm afraid, but fear Him in as I respect enough. I respect Him. I have that deep reverence for God that I am going to trust Him. Trust Him with my eyes closed is probably the best way we can do it. Because with our eyes open, we have a hard time trusting. Some would say, Taylor's foolish. Because Taylor went up to the balcony today, and he's sitting there. He's learning the board and everything like that. He's studying that in college. And so Taylor said, where should I sit? And so JT kind of got him in position. I said, all right, Taylor, just sit down. And Taylor did not feel behind him. (laughs) And he sat down. Now, there was a chair there. I am evil, but I'm not that evil. Sometimes, right, Taylor? But Taylor sat down. And I said to Taylor, I said, Taylor, I said, you just, you just flat out trusted that when I said sit down now, there's a chair there, that there was a chair there. And that's what sometimes you guys would think a trust in Chaz might not be that good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way we should be with God. Trust God with our eyes closed, giving Him our heart. We trust Him and we fear Him. We give Him everything we are. We go through the world with our eyes closed, trusting in God to lead us each step of the way. That's what we need to do. That's trusting in the Lord. That's fearing the Lord. We're departing for evil, from evil. We're going to depart from evil if we have our eyes closed and we're trusting God. Do you understand that? Open our eyes to what you have for us, God, but please close our eyes to anything else. That's what we should be saying close it to anything that comes into our life that maybe is evil. And then there's another key verse there. It's another promise that comes along with this. If we trust in the Lord, if we fear the Lord and depart from evil, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. There will be healing in our own lives. You say, well, I don't need to be healed. I didn't get shoulder replacement surgery. I didn't have to get surgery on my throwing arm like JT. I don't need to be healed. We all need to be healed. 
when we come to know Christ, the time where we're going to be healed is when we're complete in Him. That's when we're going to be fully healed. And how can we do that? While we're on this earth, we trust in Him, and we, f- we fear Him. And we let Him take us where we're going. It'll be health to our navel and marrow to our bones. And then we see our last point here. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Now when you look at this verse, and, and, and I actually believe, if I remember correctly, it was read this morning as well. Um, when we're talking about honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all the increase, what are we talking about here? Anybody have any idea what we're talking about? Our ties. We're talking about what we're doing, what we gain, our gains, right? Our increase. Okay, so when we're honoring the Lord, we're supposed to trust Him and give Him our heart. We're supposed to fear Him and let Him, as it says here in in verse 7, be not wise in our own eyes, but let Him really guide us. Use His eyes to guide us. And then we're supposed to honor Him with our substance. We are to give Him our capital. We are to give Him our increase. We are to give Him our revenue. And you can determine that in your own. But we are to give to God. And that's what this verse is talking about. If we're going to be wise in God's eyes, we're going to give to Him. Now, we're not going to go in and we're not going to start talking about a new doctrine that is going around the world or has been going around the world. Okay? But we are to give to God. Do you understand that? We are to give to God doing what? Trusting Him. Having fear of God. And just give to Him. Because that's what He wants us to do. Now, it tells us, yes, as we see in verse 10, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That should not be the reason we're given. We shouldn't be given to God because if I give to God, then He's going to fill my house. He's going to give me all the cars I want, and my garage will be filled. I don't have a barn, so I don't need horses. I don't need to put hay in there or or corn or whatever it is, right? So if I give to God, He's going to give all this back to me. should, Should that be our thought? No. We should honor God enough that we should be given to God. And then... If He chooses, He can bless us and He can fill our pockets. But that should be a cycle, should it not? If our pockets get filled, they should also get emptied. And where should they get emptied? Right here. Using it for God's God's ministry, should it not? Are we willing to trust God? Do we fear the Lord? Do we honor the Lord? Or do we look at our own wisdom? And you can put that into the same thing with honor, our own wisdom. Where can it take us if I have $5 in my wallet? And I think I need to give it to the offering, but I say I can't because I only have one gallon of gas. And that might get me a gallon and a half nowadays. Maybe. Bill. Bill. We can, we can all thank God that Bill doesn't make that decision. <laughs> Are we trusting God in our life? Are we giving Him everything? Are we giving Him our heart? If you give Him your heart, you're giving Him everything. Do you fear God? Are you willing to say, God, open my eyes to you, but close my eyes to the world? Are we honoring God in what we're gaining, in what we make money-wise? Are we honoring God, trusting Him, fearing Him, that we can give over and above what we think we can give and watch God work? You all need, we talked about missions, and uh, it would be great if all of us could go into missions at least for a little bit of time. And see how God will work if you're following. And I understand this. If God didn't call you into missions, you know, God's not probably going to help you out because you're, not, you're going into missions without Him calling you into that. But it's great because there are times, as, 
when you're in missions that you don't have any idea how the bills are getting paid. But the bills are getting paid. And it's an amazing thing. And uh, I don't know, I don't think we've told too many people this, but when we, were, when we went to the field, we needed 100% of our support to get to the field. And so there was a man that came up to us and said, how far are you from 100%? And we told him. Well, he said, I'll cover that. I'll take that. You're, you're going to be at 100%. And we said, well, thank you. We got to the field in July. In September, that man lost his job. And we were not, not $5 a month under supported. Okay? We were one fifth of our support under supported. And can I tell you that God just continued to work? And somehow, and, and we just, we thought, okay, we made up a list. What do we need to give up? What is it we need to give up? What's the first thing we can give up without, you know, and, and still live? We, not a necessity, right? Well, it was the TV. We could give up the TV. And then we went down, okay, this is what we can give up, this is what we can give up. Can I tell you, we never had to give up anything? Was it because I'm so good with finances? <laughs> no, it's not. I don't even want to try that stuff. But yes, we tried to be a little bit wiser in, in how we spent, but we had over and above what we, we even needed. And it's just amazing to see God work. And I think may maybe there's times in all of our lives where we can say that's what happened in our life. I don't know. Maybe you can. But it's always great when you see that happen because it's always an encouragement. You see that happen and you know what? You know God's behind you. You know God's with you. And it encourages us to trust, fear, and honor God in what we're doing. Do you do that? As we look at this passage here in Proverbs 3, Solomon talking with his son. Three main points. Trust in the Lord. Fear the Lord. Honor the Lord. If we were to truly sit down and evaluate our lives, would we come to the point where we would say, yes, I do all three of those? Or would we say, you know what, I'm willing to trust Him with all my heart. I'm willing to fear Him, but I'm not willing to honor Him with my money. Maybe I'll honor Him with my money, but I'm not necessarily trusting Him with all my heart. Or maybe I'm not going to fear Him, but I'll trust Him and I'll honor Him. You know what, I think we need all three. I think we need all three in our lives. And, and two-thirds may be great in baseball. In fact, nobody's ever done that batting wise but two thirds is not good when we're talking to God God wants 100% are we willing to give 100% to God and let him lead us as we go into territory that maybe we don't know and each of us have that own issue in our life where we're trying to figure out what is that territory where is God going to take me can we do that are we willing to do that Will we blindly trust God and follow after Him? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank You for Your Word. And Lord, I do thank You for this Word from Solomon passed down to his son that we can all learn from and understand that, Lord, we need to trust You in everything. We need to just give You our lives and see where You take us. Lord, we need to fear You and, 